Hello, my name is Lawrence Gold, and I'm the developer of this program. I'll be demonstrating and I'll be your guide through this program, which will enable you to replicate for yourself what I have done for myself and others have done for themselves. What you have in hand is a program of guided instruction by which you'll be able to recover control of the muscles of biting and chewing that have kept your jaws clenched and made you subject to things like teeth grinding, tension headaches, and earaches. What you'll be learning in this program is control of the movements of the jaws in their basic three directions of movement, which are opening and closing, side-to-side -side movements as in grinding, and forward-to-back movements, which are involved in opening your jaws to their fullest extent. Each of these movements will refresh your control of those movements and muscles so that you have freedom of movement and a naturally normalized degree of muscle tone in those muscles of biting and chewing. This will enable you to bypass any need for mouth guards, surgery to the teeth to adjust the tooth surfaces, or other means by which people hopefully get rid of TNJ dysfunction. You'll find that this rather simple and direct approach cuts right to the center of what's going on with TNJ dysfunction and produces rather rapid improvements in jaw movement function. I'll be guiding you through a series of organized movement patterns that address the basic directions of movement of the jaws which is opening and closing, side-to-side -side movements, and front-to-back movements. Now, of necessity, we'll also be addressing the muscles at the base of the head at the back of the neck, which are instrumental in the head movements that you use, for example, in biting an apple where you bring your head forward enough to be able to open your jaws to meet that apple with your teeth. You see, control of the jaws is not just in the muscles of the jaws, but also in the muscles of the neck. And so these movement actions that you'll be learning will incorporate jaw muscle control and neck muscle control. Now what's going to happen in these movement exercises is you're going to recover control over the involuntary or habitual jaw tension which has created the symptoms you've been suffering of TMJ dysfunction. Now, what you should expect from doing these somatic exercises is generally an increase of freedom of movement and a decrease of pain. During your practice of somatic exercises, what you're likely to encounter or discover in yourself is limits to how far you can do the movements. And these limits are caused by brain level conditioning, which set the muscular tone and the capacity of the muscles to relax and lengthen. These exercises reset that brain conditioning. What it feels like is a stopping point in a movement with which you're working, beyond which you feel you can't go further without forcing. And what you do when you encounter such a stopping point is stay right there and feel the muscles of biting that you're using in that exercise, and you'll notice suddenly that you're holding on unnecessarily to those muscles and in that discovery you'll be able to let them go and go further through the movement. Now another technique you may use to increase your growth of range of motion when you reach a limitation or a stopping point is scan the whole body for any tension that isn't intended directly to be part of the somatic exercise and let it go. At that point, you'll discover a spontaneous easing or releasing of the limitation. Now, as you do these somatic exercises, another possibility is possible, which occurs for some people, but not all, and that is soreness. Now, these exercises are inherently moderate in intensity. They're not strong, they're generally moderate or even mild, and the soreness is generally the result of either of two conditions. One is the awakening of sensory awareness and these muscles of biting. And 
the sensing of how sore or how fatigued those muscles have been all along. And the other is a kind of a rebound effect between the new pattern of movement you're cultivating and the old pattern of restriction in which you've been living. And those constitute or form two different ways of organizing those movements, and they have a kind of an internal argument in you. The new pattern prevails, but there's a temporary, you might say, argument between the two in which you get a kind of rebound soreness. That soreness generally resolves spontaneously in 24 to 36 hours. And if you want, you may rest from the somatic exercises until that soreness has abated enough that you can do the somatic exercise without cringing from either pain or expectation of pain. Now, some people get rather enthusiastic about this particular program and do all five somatic exercises in one practice session, and that can lead to, to some rather intense soreness. So my suggestion is that you do no more than one or two of the somatic exercises in a given day and cycle through those same somatic exercises seven times or so before proceeding to the next.